Hello there everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make this wire work macrame cabochon using the looping technique. And this is what mine looks like. So you have it like this from the front. You get a really nice effect with the loops going around here. That's actually what's capturing the cabochon. Then you have your macrame around the side. And then also the same on the back here. So it's in there nice and securely. You use the same wire throughout and also to make the bail you can obviously make to fit whatever you want to. So this is based off of a tutorial that I've previously done with this exact same technique but using cord. So I had the idea and also suggestions from some of the people watching that video to actually make it but using wire. So this is the result. So it's the exact same technique, just showing you how to do it with wire as wire reacts a little bit differently than the cord. So if you want to learn how to do this, then keep watching. So these are the materials that we're going to need. First of all here I have my wire. Now this is a 0.4mm regular round copper wire that I'm just working with here. I thought the colour would go nicely with the purple cabochon that I'm using. Now you can use whatever cabochon you want to, but in this case I'm using a teardrop one that's 4 by 3 centimetres. But like I said, whatever size and shape really this will work for. So let's get it all together and let's get started. So then what we'll need is some lengths of wire, and what I have here is six lengths of about 75 centimeters each. Now if you're using a different size cabochon, you might need them to be longer or shorter, but that all depends on the cabochon itself. So now what I've then done is taken all my lengths of wire here, then put them onto my macrame board. I'm just using this mini macrame board with these notches, it makes it much easier to work with. All in the same slot, that's fine. And then what we need to do first of all is start making some square knots here. So to begin with, what I'm going to do here is just separate them out like I have. So I'm just going to leave two of the lengths of wire in the middle and then just separate out the rest towards the sides. So kind of two separately there on each side of them. So what we're going to do first is make some square knots around these two centre wires. So these are going to be the holding wires first of all. So I'm just going to take the two that are closest, one on each side, and then I'm going to make square knots by taking my left one over the two holding wires. The right one goes over that and then underneath everything in the middle. Make sure you go underneath both holding wires so you don't miss one of them. And then up through the loop on the other side and then pull it all the way through. And then this is the first half of the square knot. And then we need to tighten this a bit. Go around here. And then we need to make the other half of this knot by taking the right wire over the holding wires there and then taking the left one over that so bring it down over and then underneath everything in the middle again remember it's both holding wires and then up through the loop on the other side and then pull it all the way through like this and then again we want to tighten this and this is then going to get tightened right underneath the first half and we now have one full square knot. So what I want to do is make three of these. So we start again with the left wire, bring that over the holding wires, take the right one over that and underneath everything in the middle and up through the loop. And obviously because it is wire that we're working with I just want to show you here for instance where if it's cord, you can kind of just pull the cords without worrying about it. Because it's wire, we need to think of it a little bit differently. It's still the same things we're doing, but if you look here, if I just keep pulling this, I have a little loop here. If I just pull at this, this is going to form a kink in the wire. We want to avoid that. So whenever you kind of catch this, which is also why I just pull it nice and gently, slowly. Make sure that you kind of undo your kinks and loops before you pull anything tight just so we avoid any kinks because kinks in the wire will also weaken it pull it tight underneath the first one and then take the right wire just like before because we now need to do the other half of this square knot that we're doing then the left one goes over that underneath everything in the middle and up through the loop and then pull this tight, just like that. So we're going to have two square knots. What I also like to do when working with wire to make my crown here, when I'm tightening my knots, I kind of like to make sure you have an even tension throughout so you get nice and even looking knots. But then I also like to kind of run 
the wire through my hands and fingers just to help straighten out if there's any little bends or kinks in the wire I straighten out so they're ready for the next knot that I'm going to be doing but also just it helps warm it up and make it a little bit easier to work with so make another one so we have three here in total when I've then done my three knots here it's now time to swap over so we can get these little loops that we need so what I'm going to do is on the bottom here where I have those two holding wires that I've just been using to make my knots around I'm going to release them because now we need to kind of have some of these wires swap jobs so I'm just releasing them and then instead of just having making these knots square knots in the middle and then we have still the two loose wires on the outside that we haven't used yet we now need to start making some square knots on each side of this so I'm just going to take one side at a time so the two middle ones here that were the holding wires put them out to each their own side and then what I'm going to do if you can see here bringing in if I'm going to start on the left side we take the two out to that side that we were using before so the one of the holding wires and then one of the working wires and then also the last wire that we haven't used yet bring that in so we have three here now so this is going to be enough to make square knots on this side and then we also then have three on the other side then what we're going to need to do is the one that was the working wire out of these three is going to be the holding wire now so I'm going to just bring this down and place it in my board again it just makes it a lot easier to work with fastening it there and then I want to make a square knot here so I'm going to start on my left side again so take the left wire which is the one that we hadn't used yet bring that over the holding wire then take the right one over that and then underneath everything in the middle and up through the loop and then pull it all the way through and then start pulling this up tight so we end up right beneath the square knots here they're going to kind of be a stopper for the one that we're doing now because you can't pull it any further than that anyway so that's the first half then we need to take the right one over the holding wire the left one over that and underneath everything in the middle and you can see this is just another square knot we're doing just like before tighten this all the way up underneath so there we go so that's the one on this side I'm now going to release the holding cord because we've done that one on this side that we're going to do put these out to the side just to get them out of the way then we need to move over to the other side and do exactly the same thing so take the one that was the working cord for the previous knot place that in your board if you have it and you're using that then on this side I want to start with the right wire instead of the left one just because we're on the right side just to make it look nice and symmetrical bring that over the holding wire and then take the last one so the two holding wires that in the original section the one that's out to this right side goes over that and it's now a working wire underneath everything in the middle and then again up through the loop pulling it through nice and gently make sure we don't get any kinks and then pulling this up tight on this side in the exact same place as the other side so it won't go any further and then we need to start with the other side so remember on this one we started with the right so now we need to take the left side over and then I take my right one over that and underneath everything in the middle and this is exactly the same just doing a square knot we're just starting with the other side and tighten that so this is again now one full square knot on that side so you can see we have the three original ones in the middle and then we have the one there on each side so now I'm going to release this holding wire as well put this back out towards the right and now we need to reposition all our wires again to get to the next section and what I'm going to then do is these two wires that are kind of naturally in the middle these are two working wires, one from each side that come in towards the middle these are going to be the holding wires again and these were the ones that were the holding wires before so just bring them down in the middle I'm going to fasten them to my board there we go, so now I have the two holding wires ready 
then the two working wires are going to be the two holding wires that we just used for the knots before one on each side so again we have the two outer ones one on each side that are kind of just out of the way make your square knot around the middle like this pull it through gently tighten it all the way up underneath again and again these two square knots one on each side are now going to act as the stoppers for this knot here and there we go and pull it nice and tight and again just run your finger through your hands there over the wire to make sure you try and avoid any kinks and bends in the wire also to try and help prevent it from snapping while you're working with it if it does get a weak point it's more likely that it might snap and then finish off the other half of that square knot and there we go so I've now kind of gathered the two sides again so we have in the middle one on each side and then we start in the middle again so now I want to make another two square knots here in the middle so we have three just like in the first section and now that we then have this section done with the three square knots we need to swap over again so I separate out the two holding wires here one towards each side and then again just start with whatever side you want to I'm going to then take the one that was the working wire on this side out of the three bring that down fasten it in my board and then we need to make one square knot here first of all so on the left side like before I'm starting with my left wire bringing that over the right one goes over that and underneath everything in the middle to make the first half of our square knot here again tighten this up and again because it's wire it helps kind of also guiding the wire rather than using cord so tighten it again so it won't go any further and then take the right one first and make the other half of the square knot just like this and there we go so there you can now see the first little loop that we have which is the effect that we need to then be able to capture the cabochon I'm going to release the holding wire from this group of three put them out to the side to get them out of the way move over to the other side take these three and then grab the one that was the working wire before and then make one square knot here remembering because we're on the right side now I'm gonna start with the right wire and then make the first half of the square knot bring it all the way up and again tighten it gently you can see there that's then the loop on that side as well and then obviously we just need to make the other half of the square knot to make sure it's completely fastened tighten this and there we go so we have the side square knots in place again now we can rearrange the wires so the two working wires that are in towards the middle here that kind of naturally want to cross over become the holding wires again bring them together in the middle fasten them to my board and then I take the two working wires one on each side and start making my section here of three square knots again leaving out the two outer ones until we then need to make the outer square knots again and you just keep doing this so you get these little loops until you reach the length that's going to suit your cabochon so I would recommend measuring that along the way so for instance get your cabochon have a piece of spare cord or wire measure around so you have the length there and then you can measure against how long your section of your macrame is here so I now reach the length that I need here and we can then take it off the board so now that we have this ready what I want to just do before moving on is getting rid of a couple of these wires because there is quite a few obviously on each end so what I want to do is first of all just separate them out so the outer ones here we're just going to separate out to the side and leave them there for now then what we have are the two very middle ones that were the two holding cards there coming out together then we have one on each side of those two it's these two one on each side of the middle two there that I want to get rid of so I'm going to just take one at a time then I'm going to take that from one side over towards the other side 
and then basically back around these two middle ones and just wrap it around but do it gently obviously because it's the same gauge of wire so it's not like these two that we're wrapping around are thicker just wrap around a couple of times gently something a bit like this just a couple of times is enough then I'm going to cut off the excess and then take my chain nose and just make sure to squeeze the very end down so it's not sticking out and then the same with the other one take it around and just wrap it around those two middle ones a couple of times something a bit like this cut it away and squeeze down the end and then we've gotten rid of two wires here on this end so that's a decent amount we're down to and obviously you then want to do the exact same thing on the other end as well when we've then gotten rid of those wires on each end then I want to actually start shaping it so I'm going to get my cabochon out here and then just put it up against your macrame length and then start shaping it around so that's also kind of quite easy because it's 0.4mm wire so it's nice and soft and not too thick of a gauge so just gently shape it around here obviously I want my two ends at the top of that teardrop obviously it might be different if you're using another shape of cabochon if you're using an oval one for instance just choose wherever you want the top to be so there we go they're going to meet right there at the top what I then want to start doing as well is you can see this is going to sit around the side but they're kind of sticking out and not really capturing the caption because it can still fall out like that so what I actually want to do is I want to just be able to grab hold of the macrame and then also keep hold of the cabochon as much as possible and then start just with my fingers pushing in those loops that we made to sit around the cabochon because those are the ones that are going to capture it so just start doing that all the way around working your way across so they come across and just capture the edge of the cabochon nicely so go back and forth until you've got them all the way so that when you're then holding at the top here without holding onto the cabochon and you could just holding it like this the cabochon doesn't fall out so that's the main thing you can then still keep going around if you just need to readjust it a bit you can always keep pushing them until you're completely happy with how they sit when you're then happy with it then it's obviously time to also fasten the top here so it's going to stay in place so just keep hold of the cabochon and then what we're going to do is start tightening this a bit together so what we have are these kind of four that are coming naturally together in a group because that's two from each side that were the holding cords there so I'm just going to keep those right here in the middle then what we have are these four cords all the way around kind of one by itself I'm just going to start with one of them it doesn't really matter which one you can start at the back or the front and then I'm going to just take it it's naturally wanting to go over towards the opposite direction I'm going to do that bring it around towards the top and then back around the back and wrapping around this group up here like this so just wrap around once or twice for now because again this is really just to get it fastened to then be able to keep working with it so that's the one and then I'm going to take the one from the other side, wrap it around the opposite direction like this and there we go so this is pretty much captured from the front now flip it over to the back and then I'm just going to do the exact same thing with these wires as well so take one, take it around to the opposite side and wrap it around the top here so this group in the middle and the same with the very last one as well just a few times so there we go so now I have these four in the middle and then these four individually wrapped around them and it's 
definitely much more captured in there now. It's nice and secure. And also, it finishes off the top there just nicely. And it kind of blends in with the rest of the design. So then once you've wrapped all these around here and you feel it's nice and secure, then what I want to do is actually get rid of these four wires that we individually wrapped around the other four. So I'm going to take my flush cutters and because each of them were wrapped around several times, it's going to be fine and secure enough to cut them off. Just going to go right down to where they're coming out from, cut the excess away. And then as I'm cutting each one off, I always want to just take my chain nose pliers and go in and squeeze the very end down because you'll find if you go over it with your fingers it's going to be a little bit sticking out just like that and then just do one at a time here and squeeze it down and do that with all four of the wires so now what we then have is these four wires left that's coming out right from the top and in my case I've got two shorter ones because that's the ones we started out with, the first tails, and then I've got two long ones that we have left from making the macrame all the way around here, that section. So you want to kind of separate them out so the two shorter ones, if you have different lengths left, are coming out in the middle. So these are going to be your two holding cords, and then the other two we want one on each side because what I want to do now is make the bail by making a row here of square knots. So I'm just going to start, take one of your working wires here, I'm just going to start from the left side, it doesn't matter at all what side you start with, as long as you stay consistent, and then start making my first square knot, bringing this, tightening this all the way down to where all the wires are coming out from, and then make the other half of the square knot to finish this off and make it a full one. Tighten this all the way down, just like that. And then you want to keep making a section, a row of knots here, the square knots. How many you do is going to determine how large a bale is going to be. So it's really up to you how large you need your bale to be, depending what you want to put this pendant onto, whether it's chain or cord or whatever. So make a section of square knots. Now that I then have my section of knots here that's ready to be turned into the bale, what I'm going to do is just get in this case, I'm just using a crochet hook. I find them quite handy because you can get them loads of different sizes. You can use any form of mandrel that you have. That's the size that you want the bale to be. Then I'm going to put this behind. I'm just going to press it forward a little bit first. And then put this behind the section and then fold it back around. So the end of my square knots basically going to meet up with the very beginning of them, just like that. They're now coming down towards the back like this. And then what I'm going to do first of all, we obviously need to secure this. So I'm just going to take the two holding wires here. Grab hold of your bale so it doesn't move when it's got the shape that you want it to have. I'm going to bring these over to the side. making Try and make sure the bale stays in place. And then bring these two wires around the front. You can also turn it just to make sure it looks nice from the front still while you're doing this. Bring them around and then just wrap these around about once or twice. There we go. And then we obviously want to get rid of these. So just find a place where you feel it's suitable. I'm going to go and get my flush cutters out, cut them down, and then again, like always, make sure you take your chain nose and you then squeeze in the very ends. And if you can, then, like I said, get them to a place where they're going to fit in and try and when you squeeze them, nestle them in between the rest of the wires. It's going to really make sure that they're going to kind of finish off the ends nicely and not catch or scratch on anything, just like that. Then we have these two wires left, one from each side. Those are the ones we made the square knots with here for the bale. For those, I'm just going to take one at a time, wrap it around below the bale a few times, basically just enough to feel like it's secure. And same principle, 
get it to a place where you feel that you can nestle it in between, cut it down, put away the excess, and then squeeze in the end. And whenever you then cut something off and you're squeezing down the end here, always just run your finger over it to make sure you can't feel it. If you can still feel it a little bit, squeeze it down a bit more until you can't feel it at all. Because if you can't feel it at all, it should be fine for not catching or scratching on anything. And the very last wire, just basically do the exact same thing. You can actually bring it around the back first here and wrap it around a few times. And get rid of this the exact same way. And again, just squeeze it down as well. So it's all nice and secure because we have loads of knots here and we have loads of wraps with all the wires, but it's still also blending in with each other really nicely. So there we go, there you then have the bale. So you can see we then have the whole piece done now. It's the front and this is the back. And you have this nice effect of the loops and then also crossing over the top with your macrame around the side. And it's also in there really nice and securely. You can obviously then use whatever chain or cord or whatever you want to put this on. Completely up to you. So that's how you make this. A pretty simple technique. The same as I previously shown you with the cord. Doing the exact same thing. This is just basically doing that but in the wire version. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching. Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this triple row wire macrame bracelet. And this is it. So this is how it looks. And I've just chosen these beads, some purple coated hematite and then copper wire. But obviously you can choose whatever combination you want. So it looks like this and you get this kind of cuff style bracelet because you have the rigidity from the wire but it's still a basic macrame technique just with wire instead of cord. 